Welcome back. Um, into now to matters pertaining to ICT, which is a very important component in as far as Vision 2030 is concerned. The person who's very passionate about this um, amongst uh, within the ministry, of course, apart from the minister, that's the minister is a permanent secretary. Minister of Information and Communication, Dr. Bitanya Nemo, it's good to have you here, sir. And um, let me say this correctly. Alex Tunomogisha. Tunomogisha. I said that correctly. From Jesse. Yeah. Yeah? Karibu sana. Let me start with you, Bona, Bona, Bona PS, and then, of course, uh, you'll see why Jess is here. But um, just give us a glimpse of how far we've come um, as, as a country, as far as ICT is concerned. And the bigger picture that now we're talking about um, uh, is something as, as a community, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I believe is why uh, Jess is sitting here. Tell us uh, just a glimpse of, of how we, where we are as a country and, and the bigger players within the community in as far as ICT is concerned. Thank you for the invitation to come here. Uh, in very uh, brief yes. summary of yes. everything. Yes, that uh, just four years ago, we were struggling to get sufficient bra broadband, which was going to enable us to create jobs in this sector. That's right. Uh, that has been sorted out, and the government has invested heavily in terms of distributing that mm. content, uh, uh, distributing the the networks right. throughout the country. Right. Uh, we are at the last bit. Uh, what we call the last mile. Uh -huh. uh, this is what you call long-term evolution. This is a very robust technology which will take broadband to the smallest village in this country. Right. The reason why we are doing that, um, if you look at the Vision 2030, we've been talking about creating this region, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. making this region a knowledge, right. a knowledge right. society. Right. Uh, for us to create a knowledge society, we must create that knowledge and deliver it even up to the village. Absolutely. So we, ha we are through with the infrastructure. The other aspect that we must begin to do is the content that would run on these systems. That's, right. That's why JC has Absolutely. come, uh -huh. uh, because they are content people. Right. Right. And uh, in Kenya here, we have been talking about content content in education, right. content in entertainment, content in all other areas. Yes, exactly. exactly. But uh, unfortunately, we have been very slow. But the good thing is that many Kenyans now use internet. Four years ago, we had three million users. Today, we have 12.5 million wow. users of internet. We want it to be even 50, even 30 million Kenyan users because we want even up to the primary school to be able to use internet. So what Kenya is trying to do, um, if you saw the launch of Safaricom mm. Cloud, mm. is that we have now place where to put uh, this content for people to access it. So the plans we have with Safaricom and other local uh, people who play in the education sector mm. is to make sure that every high school kid at least has either a tablet or a laptop or a or a notebook mm. to be able to access the content. Uh, oh, what has oh, happened oh. is that uh, when you have content like the one we have in uh, in, uh, in in e-learning yes. systems, right. because of the visuals, the capacity to remember is much it's higher, higher than what the traditional methods of teaching. Absolutely. So if we want to help this country, we must move practically the entire country into uh, an area where they are able to build this knowledge uh, within a very short That's period powerful. of time. Absolutely. Um, East Africa, yeah. we have linked this fiber to all parts of East Africa. Uh, the fibers run into Uganda, and Uganda is actually connected into Burundi and Rwanda, and then in Tanzania we have also linked to that. So the entire East Africa is actually linked uh, through the fiber optics. Well done. Uh, Kenya has gone ahead with LTE, but most of East African countries are looking at what Kenya is doing mm -hmm. in terms of this LTE, what Kenya is doing in terms of content development. Because once we develop this content, it's actually can be used throughout the right. region and even the whole of Africa. These are opportunities to create jobs here and grow the, throughout the Absolutely. continent. I remember you wrote a comment some time back. Yeah. You said that uh, uh, perhaps you should look at ICT as a new agriculture. Uh, or land, you know, people are very passionate about land, but you know, here, here is an opportunity for us. Don't just look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, 
that I later on I changed and said, <laughs> instead of us hunting for oil in northern Kenya, yes, 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 let yes. us get into Absolutely. ICT because we can actually see the oil itself. But for us to succeed, we must go to schools and partner with Jesse Absolutely. and fact, create that. Um, Alex, coming on this one, in terms of uh, the organization, Global E-Schools and Communities Initiative, or simply known as Jesse, um, tell us what your, your, your organization is about um, and what benefits you see in terms of partnering, or should I say now, um, uh, plugging in into the Kenyan um, infrastructure. Well, thank you very much, and, mm. and, and thank you for having us, Karibu. having me here uh -huh. this morning. Uh, just a brief background about Jesse or the Global Schools and Communities mm -hmm. Initiative. Um, we were created uh, by the UN ICT Task Force, which was a task force put together by the UN to, to look at how ICTs could be used for development. Mm -hmm. And our special focus is education. Right. And in fact, it's interesting that you, uh, Dr. Bitego mentioned the, the Knowledge Society because our mission, or our vision is a knowledge society for Absolutely. all, which is, you know, how do you use knowledge for development? That's right. Which is, That's right. Mm -hmm. you know, countries are no longer developing because they have oil. Countries are developing <laughs> because they can leverage knowledge and, and turn that knowledge into new, info, new innovations um, to boost the economy. Mm. And that's what we are all about because right. it all starts from the schools, as Dr. Bitego mm -hmm. clearly said. Mm -hmm. it's, it's because the schools are, is where the, the future uh, citizens, private sector, the future Bill Gates uh, yes, and, and, yes. and uh, you know, the late uh, Steve, Steve Jobs, Steve Steve Jobs. Right. Mm. that's where they come from. You know, they don't just walk off the street, but the, it's the preparation that's done in the schools that's important. And so what we do uh, in a kind of a very practical way is, is work with the ministries of education uh, and, and other ministries and, you know, people like KIE here, uh, really, to, to work with them and make sure that they understand the potential of ICTs and how ICTs could be used. Mm -hmm. You know, the interlinkages, between, it's not just a matter of putting computers in school. Right. Uh, right. But, right. you know, you put a computer in the school, somebody has to use it. So mm. uh, the teacher has to be trained and the content has to be there. As a matter of fact, I think the biggest investment when it comes to making sure that ICTs are used, mm -hmm. the, the biggest payback is if you train the teacher and you provide content. And I think th th that's really key. Absolutely, absolutely. We are speaking to Dr. Bitanga Ndembo, the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Information and Communication, and also Mr. Alex uh, Tunamugisha. I got it, uh, yeah. from Jesse. Um, we're talking about um, uh, perhaps um, fast-tracking the introduction or, or, or really fast-tracking even within the institutions, uh, the importance of ICT in as far as, um, as, you, as you say, creating uh, global leaders, creating um, uh, powerful people like Bill Gates. Let's talk about whether the institutions we have already, you mentioned KIA, I think Alex yeah. mentioned the same yeah. thing. Are they up to speed in as far as um, what a Kenya, in as far as Vision 2030 is concerned, ICT, very powerful component within that. Are we leveraging ourselves as a country first in terms of institutions that begin to prepare our children to begin to see what ICT is all about in the bigger picture? Um, I, I would say actually ICT, I mean uh, KIA has tried. Well and they're trying. Well done. Uh, but what, what needs to be done mm -hmm. is that KIE must delink itself from creating the content and allowing the private sector to do that, then they can simply regulate. Uh, that way uh -huh. you will be able to generate a lot of employment in the private sector and be able to scale up very fast. Mm. Doing it through the government institutions, mm. uh, it, it, it's it stalls the, <laughs> the, whole the, the development. Yes, exactly. So they, they have tried, they are trying, but they need to just get into regulation and, and allow the private sector, because the Ministry of, uh, of Communication has mm. developed what we call, a, uh, um, we have developed a policy mm. which will create um, a creative economy right. in this country. Right. A creative economy is where now you will begin to get this kind of uh, people that he's talking yes, about yes. and be able to develop a lot more content. But let me explain one point so mm. that everybody understands right. how ICT links to development and why we keep on talking about knowledge society. Right. Uh, what has been happening in this country is that we pray to God that when you plant your maize it would grow. <laughs> now, if you look at the uh, content that the government put out in the in the open government mm. portal. Mm. This information includes the soils of yes. the whole country. 
meaning that anywhere you are standing, you can figure out which product you can put there mm. that would give you the maximum output. That's right. That's right. But what we do is you drive to Kangundo and you find people have planted maize because that is where they get the food, mm -hmm. but the productivity is lowest uh, for maize in Kangundo. They should actually grow cassava and, uh, and sell cassava to people in North Rift. That's right. uh, that way they get the maximum. The people who not live to get maximum. Mm. This is what we are talking about: leveraging our knowledge to develop. I see. Then there are many other things. The farmers in Nyeri, for example, mm. uprooted coffee because they did not understand that there are new varieties which would give them which would be more productive. Uh -huh. mm. The old varieties they had, you need to have two acres in order to break even. You, you see? Yes. Yes. yes break I even. <laughs> <laughs> The term break even in itself is not in any begin to rely on it, but you have to train the people yeah. <laughs> to understand that knowledge is available. You know, nowadays, when I go to speak, even to, to students who are learning music, That's right. mm -hmm. I find out what classical music is, and then I know there are quartets and whatever yes, I speak. Yes. I speak with authority because wow. we have this in, the information in Google there. and we Absolutely. found it. We must get to that to change our culture Absolutely. where we rely on knowledge and science mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. define our future. I, I see, I see.